that's okay because I understand yeah. that's what people usually call you. Yes. One of the more controversial positions that you take is that black Africans landed in America 2,000 years before Columbus. Uh, I would uh, not specify the, the day, but probably exceeding 2,000 years. The fact is that Columbus never came to the United States of America or North and South America. He came as close as San Salvador. Uh, there's a rumor that says that Columbus came to, United, to, to America. He did not come to America. He came to an island of America. They're supposed to came to America, not Columbus. He came to the Caribbean. But it is commonly stated, just as much as they state, that Columbus discovered America while the Indians sat down watching him do it. Now, but uh, all the, the, the knowledge of Africans in the Americas uh, quite knowledgeable to scholars. The fact that it's suppressed doesn't have uh, any validity at all. Let me bounce a couple of things off of you. One thing, this article that I'm going to be referring to, to our home audience and to our studio audience, this article came out in the September 1981 issue of Science Digest, and it's entitled Black Kings in Ancient America. You and some other black scholars believe that these people, African people, came to this continent before Columbus. We don't believe we know. How do we know? What the, evidence? the evidence is there. For example, when you go to uh, Central America, the Yucatan Peninsula, and uh, at Ecuador and places like that, they have patches of uh, Carthaginian money from 200 feet down in the ground, meaning that there were preluvial disruptions and those money were buried. So it, it indicates a period of time at least from that, when you look at the strata, you could tell the period of time in which they've been here. And when you're talking about Carthage, you're talking about at least 212 BC when Carthage was finally destroyed by the, by the, by the Romans. Uh, again, the Queen, uh, Queen Makeda, uh, which you call the Queen of Sheba, there are maps which Rome, the church in Rome, the so-called Holy Father, has suppressed these maps from the time of Justinian, showing South America and what is today called Central America. The, the maps there and, and Victoria, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, Makeda goes back to at least 892 B.C. Before Christ. Before, let me point out another thing, just from the same article. I don't know if we can see this on television. But here is a picture. Tell me what this is, and why do you see this as proof of the presence of Africans in America before? That is the Trump. head of an Almec. Uh, 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 Almec. And the Almecs were said to be the first of the indigenous Americans. And uh, if you look, if an Almec walk in here, then you would believe that he had come from the middle of Africa. And there is no doubt about it that all of the writers prior to racism admitted that the Almecs were, in fact, Africans who had come across here. There is no doubt when uh, Pignafetto and others, the point is that Van Settema is writing and others, but Leo Weiner in 1938 at Harvard University wrote a two-volume book for which he was fired about the Africans, uh, Almecs being Africans. And well, let me bounce this off of you, okay? You take the same statue, mm -hmm. you say, well, you say that they're obviously black Africa. creatures. Yeah. Thick lips, broad nose, mm -hmm. the stereotype. stereotype. Okay, other, the stereotype. Other anthropologists say, I think Michael Cole was one of them. He says that this is not a black man. He said the people who made these statues, which I understand are eight feet high, the people who made these statues, didn't have sharp enough tools to give them white features. So they're not really black statues, they're white people called the crude tools. What's your response to that? It's strange that the tools were not sharp enough to make narrow noses, but it was sharp enough to put eyelids. So it would seem to me that an eyelid is harder to make than a thin nose. But uh, Michael Cole is no less a racist than the head of the Ku Klux Klan. I mean, what's the difference between Michael Cole Reagan and the Ku Klux Klan? And it does have the same philosophy. What is the difference between the fellows writing the Bible and writing about the Queen of Sheba asking, I mean, saying to Solomon, uh, look, uh, look not, ye daughters of Cana, look not upon me because I'm black. My parents send me the vineyard and that's all this nonsense. She's black because nature made her black. Her mother and father were black. That's why she's black. Had nothing to do with going in any vineyard, even though it's in the Bible. Okay, you talk about religion. We're going to get to that in a while. Let me turn to Dr. Simmons. You also agree with this position that Africans were in this country. I have no problem, no doubt. 
Right. As a matter of fact, speaking about, uh, like Dr. Ben mentioned, uh, and you spoke about Michael Nico, I own a book several years ago and still have it in my possession by Michael Nico himself, who is considered one of America's leading archaeologists and anthropologists from Yale, one of America's most prestigious schools. In his own work, he referred to them as Negroid. And he went farther to state the title of the book is America's First Civilization, what he calls civilization. And to turn around and to tell these youngsters and other people in America particular that the black men was the first to build any type of civilization in the Americas will be disturbing to Americans. And so... Let me ask you this. Yes. Even if you're right, let's say you're right, what difference does it make? It makes a lot of difference. What kind of difference? It takes the inferiority complex out of the black man who felt that his only beginning and relationship here in this part of the world is that of slavery. Then it puts him in the driver's seat because, again, they don't tell you that they are man-made hills within the United States. They call them mounds. And they range from in the Midwest all the way down the eastern sea coast of the United States. And they found artifacts in them that are similar to things found in West Africa and in Egypt, which is Northeast Africa, that predates the arrival of the so-called indigenous Indians of these lands. Another thing is some years ago, one of the major television network back in New York, I don't remember exactly which one, ABC or which, I did a documentary, and they said that these Olmecs are the ones who brought right into the Americas about 3000 BC. To tell blacks that they ought to be glad to enter into these schools of higher learning today in order to read and write, because their ancestors back in Africa couldn't read and write. And you see how what it will do to tell them that they brought right into the Americas. Antonio Pecavetta, that Dr. Ben mentioned, who sailed with Magellan when Magellan came to the so-called New World in 1519, when they landed at the land of Virgin, which we now call Brazil, they were met by people in canoes that carried as many as 40 people. And Antonio Pecavetta recorded that these people were jet black. It seemed that they came out of uh, the infernal marshes. That meant that they were burned. He said, naked and black as they are in 1519, 27 years after Columbus's arrival to the so-called New World. Another thing they don't tell you, again, you heard my associate from Why haven't we heard these things before? Why don't we read them in the New York Times, Birmingham News? Uh, if I stole another man's country, and I brought your ancestors here to work for me, could I tell you how great your ancestors were and still expect to keep you in slavery? Well, let me...